Hello, I'm Roddy Urquhart, Senior Marketing Director at Codacip, and today's video is the first of a series which is motivated by Codacip's expanding RISC-V portfolio. In case you haven't heard of Codacip before, I'd like to mention briefly our three main offerings. They are the Codacip Studio EDA tool, which is used to develop processor IP cores. You can create your own instruction set and microarchitecture using the tools. Then there is the Codacip um, family of RISC-V processor cores, which were created using Studio. And thirdly, there is the Codacip Swerve Core support package. In this series, we're going to be introducing the topic. We're going to look into a number of questions such as what is processor performance? What is processor complexity? what is needed to support an operating system, and what is the new Codacip BK7. We're also going to look into how to interpret PPA numbers so that you, they're used in a meaningful way in choosing a processor core. Then we will draw this, the series to a conclusion. So today we're talking about an overview of the expanded RISC-V processor portfolio from Codacip. If you'd asked us what was available just over three months ago, we would have said we could offer you the BK3 and BK5 embedded RISC-V cores aimed at the low and medium ends of the embedded market. Today we have an offering of six different cores. On the right you'll see that we've added the Western Digital Swerve cores, specifically the EL2, EH1 and EH2. These are available through our support package. Just last week we announced the Codacit BK7. So these cores come from different sources and different backgrounds. So on the Codacit side we have created the RISC-V processor cores using the CODAL processor description language. The HDKs and SDKs are automatically generated by using our Codacip Studio tool. For these cores, we use a commercial licensing model. And one of the advantages of these cores is that they are very easy to customize using Codacip Studio. You're not having to intervene at the RTL level, but you can edit the high level CODAL description to update the core to include custom instructions or to make microarchitectural changes. The Western Digital Swerve cores have been created using a more mainstream design methodology. So the RTL and instruction set simulator were developed by Western Digital and then open sourced through Chips Alliance. Well, with this business model, you can access the RTL without paying any license fees, but there may be hidden costs around deploying that core. You need to be able to connect your core up to other components. You need to use EDA flows to get an efficient implementation of the processor core. And of course, you need to write your embedded software. So we've worked with Western Digital to provide a support package to enable you to deploy a Swerve core efficiently. So with a broader offering of processor cores, to find the right processor, is it just a matter of looking into performance versus complexity? Well, what does performance mean? What does complexity mean? It can mean different things in different contexts. And this will be the subject of some later videos. For now, I just want to give some high level guidelines on which cores make sense when. The most fundamental thing you need to look at in choosing a core is whether you want a 32-bit or 64-bit core. If it's a 32-bit that you want, we can offer the BK3 and BK5 and also all three Western Digital Swerve cores are 32-bit cores. If it's 64-bit you need, 
we can offer a version of the BK5 core and the new BK7. So what about your processing requirements? If you have requirements for floating point computation, it probably makes sense to have a floating point unit to give you the efficiency that you need. For each of the BK cores, we can supply an optional FPU. If it's Linux you're after, then the starting point should be the BK7, which is Linux capable. And finally, if you're after outstanding integer performance, the Swerve EH1 and EH2 are both superscalar dual issue cores, which can give you outstanding integer performance. In fact, the EH2 offers more than that. It actually offers two, two hardware threads. So I hope this has given you a good overview of our current expanded um, processor IP offering. It will continue to expand in the future. But if you'd like to find out more, please join us for the next videos in the series. Thank you for your attention.